Hi kids, Miss Amy here. It's so good to see you this week. I sure have been missing you. Today, I wanna to tell you about someone named Nicodemus. But before I get started, you're gonna need your Bible. Okay, run and get it. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three, go! Are you back already? You are so fast. Okay, so turn in your Bible to John chapter three and I'll meet you there in a second. First, let me tell you a little bit about who Nicodemus was. Nicodemus was alive at the time of Jesus and he was a Pharisee, which meant he was a Jewish leader. He was a very important person. Well, like all Jewish people, the Pharisees believed that a Messiah would come. The Messiah would be a king who would um, rule over Israel and defeat all of Israel's enemies. Wow. We learned this on Palm Sunday, that Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah, the one the people have been waiting for. But he wasn't what the people expected. He was so much more. Okay, well, Nicodemus had been watching Jesus, and he saw all the miracles that Jesus was doing, and he was intrigued. He wanted to know more. But even though he saw Jesus during the daytime, he decided to go in the middle of the night to talk to Jesus. Why do you think he did that? Hmm. Well, it turns out Jesus wasn't too popular with all the other Pharisees. So Nicodemus probably didn't want everyone to know where he was going. He was kind of hiding a little bit as he went to go see Jesus. Okay, are you in John chapter three? Turn to verse three. Let's read together what Jesus says to Nicodemus when Nicodemus arrives. Jesus looks at him and he says this, what I'm about to tell you is true. No one can see God's kingdom unless they are born again. I'm sure Nicodemus was pretty confused at this point and he asked Jesus, how can I be born again? He was wondering how he could become like a baby again just didn't make sense at all. So Jesus told him, no, that's not what he meant. Not born like a baby, but born of the Spirit. And so Jesus goes on to explain this to him. And in fact, go ahead and look at verse 8. So Jesus told, tells him that being born again is, isn't something you can see. It's kind of like the wind. Verse 8 says, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So can you see wind? No, but you can see the effects of wind. All right, so you can see my pinwheel going because of wind. Well, you see the effects of wind, just like you see the effects of God's Spirit moving and at work and you can see people's lives transformed, not on the outside, but on the inside, because you see the effects of what has happened and how they live differently when, when the Holy Spirit does a work in their life. So this is what Jesus is talking about when he says, born again. So Nicodemus kinda, I guess, starts to understand, maybe still a little confused, and Jesus just lays it all out there for him. In verse 16, Pretty sure you've heard this one before. Let's read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Wow, so have you heard this before? Raise your hand. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay, so Jesus wants Nicodemus to know this is all about God's great love that he would send Jesus to break the power of sin and death so that we could be made alive in him. So this is great news, not just for Nicodemus, but for you and for me and for everybody in the world. All right, so the Bible tells us a little bit more about what this means. Um, the Bible says that we are dead in our sins, but God made us alive in Christ. The life comes through Jesus Christ. Okay, also another scripture says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The old life, the old way of doing things, the old sin, it's all passed away and everything's become new. This is great news. Earlier this week, I made a craft with you. It was a butterfly. And uh, this is really fun. If you didn't get a chance to make it, that's okay. Look in the description and there's a link below where you can go and make one of these too. So we talked about how the butterfly reminds us of new life and what Jesus does on the inside of each of us. Because when we are filled with sin, we're kind of like the ugly caterpillar. <laughs> there's not much to look at. There's potential there, but we're not going anywhere until we're transformed by Jesus Christ. And so when we're transformed in the inside, it's like we're made like this beautiful butterfly. Isn't that cool? Okay, so how are we born again? John chapter one, verses 12 and 13 say, yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So not born again like a baby, but born again in the spirit and made children of God, who is also spirit. This is pretty exciting. So let me ask you, do you believe in Jesus? That he went to the cross to break the power of sin so that you could be made alive in him? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made on the cross, that you took the sin, that you took the shame that we had, that we carried, and you broke it, and you, you put it to death so that we could be made alive in you. And I thank you that you didn't stay down, but you rose again and you brought us all into a new life so that we could be called children of God, a child of the Most High God. Wow, Lord, we are so amazed and so thankful. Amen. So the Bible never tells us specifically if Nicodemus decided to follow Jesus, but there's some evidence here. So. After, later in the book of John, we can see that Nicodemus speaks up before all the Pharisees to defend Jesus. And he also, when Jesus dies on the cross, he, he comes to help prepare the body for burial. He risks his reputation to care for Jesus' body. Now this is something new. This is the same guy who came in the middle of the night so no one would know that he was visiting Jesus. And now he's telling other people about Jesus by defending him and by caring for his body. So we can see that just like the wind, <laughs> there was something that changed in Nicodemus. We could see the effects of it, like you can see the effects of wind. And he was, I believe, born again because we see that he had changed. He no longer hid in the shadows of the night, but he stood up for Jesus in the daylight. Let's do the same. Let's stand up for Jesus all the time, not hiding in the night, in the shadows, not being ashamed because we have nothing to be ashamed of because we have been given new life through Jesus Christ. That's amazing, isn't it? All right, so before I leave, I want to make sure we do our bouncy balls for bouncy houses. All right, so as we memorize our scripture verse each month, we get to uh, put balls in this container and as you bring your Bible to Kids World. Well, I know I haven't seen you in a while, but still memorize your scripture. And when we meet again, bring your Bible and we're gonna fill this sucker up. And you know what that means? It means we get a bounce house Sunday. We're almost there. Okay. Our scripture memory verse comes from John chapter 16, verse 33. And Jesus says this, In me you will have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay, great.
Good job memorizing your scripture. I can't wait to meet with you again. I really can't wait to see you in person. I love you all. See you soon. Bye.